In this video, we'll be making a web page together that you can host inside your OpenEMR instance. First thing you'll want to do is open up a Sublime Text window. Hit Ctrl S to open up a dialog box that will allow you to save your new file with a name and set its location. Go ahead and give your file a name. I named mine my first HTML file and then follow it with an extension, .html. Next, you'll want to navigate to the location where you save the OpenEMR repository, which for me means I'll have to open up the home directory, select my username, and then open up the test folder, which is the directory I had open when I ran the git clone command to pull down the OpenEMR repository onto my virtual machine. Next, select the OpenEMR folder. You'll want to make sure that you know where the OpenEMR folder lives. When you run a web server on your computer, there's a thing called a web root folder. If you're using something like XAMPP, X -A -M -P -P, this folder will be called htdocs. In Apache, typically this folder is called www. Depending on how you configured your web server, you might also see www root http docs or http underscore public as the folder name. In OpenEMR, the web server lives in this Docker container using the OpenEMR colon flex image with the name OpenEMR underscore OpenEMR underscore one. Let's use the exec command to open up this Docker container's terminal inside our virtual machine's terminal and take a look around and see if we can find the web root folder. Start by typing the ls command so that we can orient ourselves. This folder that we're in right here, slash var slash www forward slash localhost forward slash htdocs, appears to be the web root of this Docker container. Now, the way the development Docker environment works is a little weird. Normally, you'd have all the files that run OpenEMR inside the Docker container. But since we want to be able to make changes and add new files to the repository, we pulled a copy of the OpenEMR codebase onto our virtual machine. That way, you don't have to exec into a Docker container every time you want to change around a file. But the web server that lives inside the Docker container needs to be able to see those files in order to run OpenEMR. So the development Docker environment shares a folder between this Docker container and your virtual machine that it's running on. It's named OpenEMR. Let's test this out by CDing into the OpenEMR directory inside the Docker container. And type ls to display the folders and the files inside the OpenEMR directory. Looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? The blue text is the folders and the white text is the files. Compare it to the OpenEMR folder inside the virtual machine that you have open in File Explorer. I'm going to use the vi command to make a quick file inside the Docker container's OpenEMR folder. I wouldn't recommend learning to use vi unless you have to. It's an extremely basic text editor. No bells and whistles. But it comes pre-installed in basically anything that runs on Linux. And now saving the file. And as soon as I did that, look here. A text file called a stegosaurus.txt just randomly showed up. Coming back from that tangent, the key takeaway is that the OpenEMR folder is shared between another OpenEMR folder inside the Docker container that's under the web root folder of the container's web server. So what does that mean? All you really need to know is that the OpenEMR folder on your virtual machine and its folders and subfolders are where you need to put your code. It's also where the path starts in the address bar. Let's take a look at a quick example. When you first try to access OpenEMR, it'll direct you to the login page. This page is generated by login.php. 
which lives inside the interface folder in the login subfolder. You can ignore the stuff to the right of the question mark for now. So to access your code from within the web browser, you'll need to give the path and the file name. So if you ever want to find a file, start from the OpenEMR folder, then the leftmost folder, and moving towards the right until you get to your code. And there it is, login.php. So where should you save your code to? Assuming your hypothetical code will be accessible by a clinician and not a part of the patient portal, you'll want to go back to the OpenEMR folder and select Interface, since that's where the majority of the code a clinician sees lives not portal, which is where the code that runs the patient portal tends to live. You can go ahead and make a new folder here if you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and open the modules folder, select custom modules, and click this button on the top right to make a new folder here. Name your folder whatever you'd like and click create. This will take you into your new folder, which is where you're going to want to save the file. Type a name with the extension .html and click Save. When writing HTML, there's a lot of stuff you have to type. Now, I'm lazy, so I'm going to show you a quick shortcut. Note that this will only work if you've already set your file type to PHP or HTML. Type HTML and click Tab. And look at all that text you didn't have to write. So what is all this text anyways? It's HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Basically, it's a document that's given to your web browser, such as Chrome, Firefox, or Internet Explorer, that tells it how to display a web page. When making an HTML file, the first thing you'll want to do is specify the doc type, which is short for document type. The HTML in this document actually specifies that the contents of this file are written in HTML version 5 and further, and that the browser should interpret it as such. You can use the doc type section to specify a specific historical version of HTML, as shown in this example of HTML version 4.0.1, or XHTML, which stands for Extensible Hypertext Markup Language. But for now, you don't need to worry about any of that. Just go ahead and leave the doc type set to HTML, as shown between the carrots here. Once you set the doc type, you'll want to specify the beginning of the HTML code, which you do with this tag right here, HTML inside carrots. It's also a good practice to create the end tag for an element when you write the start tag, so you don't forget. The end tag looks like the start tag, but it has a forward slash in front of the text. So this one up at the top says, the HTML is starting now, this one here on the bottom says, the HTML is complete. Mozilla.org gives a nice explanation of the difference between a tag, an element, and content. You can find a link in the description. But basically, you've got an opening tag and a closing tag. That's what's inside the carrots. The content is what lies between the opening and the closing tag. And the element is comprised of the tags and content together. In HTML, you can even nest elements inside of one another. But you'll need to be careful to close each element in opposite order. Let's look at the title tag for starters. The title field sets the text that you see in the tabs at the top of the page inside your web browser, like so. So in this example, I set the title to pterodactyl by placing the text inside the begin title tag and the end title tag. 
the title is set in the head portion of any HTML document. So we need to put it between the begin head tag and the end head tag. The head element is part of the HTML code, so you need to put it after the begin HTML tag. But the HTML just doesn't stop here. Your HTML document should also have a body. So before you end the HTML, you want to have a begin body tag and an end body tag. Most HTML elements require a begin and end tag. However, there are a few exceptions. These include the image tag, IMG, HR tag, horizontal rule, and BR tag, which forces a line break. But we'll get into all that in a later video. Let's do a quick example with the heading one tag. Type caret h1 and then click tab to automatically create the end tag and put your cursor in between the carrots. Now I'm going to be a totally stereotypical software developer and set the heading one text to hello world, but you can go ahead and type whatever you want here. Type control s to save. Now go ahead and bring up your web browser and navigate to where you saved your file in the address bar. My web server is running locally, so I typed localhost instead of specifying an IP address or a host name here. My web server is on port 8300 instead of 80, which is the default, so I need to specify the port with a colon 8300 followed by a forward slash, and then the path to the file starting from the OpenEMR directory. In my case, interface, modules, custom underscore modules, my module, and then the file name. And as you can see, the title up here is set to pterodactyl and hello world, written in big bold text. So congratulations. You just made your first HTML file hosted within the OpenEMR code base. Great job. See you next time and take care.